Who doesn't love a good cozy casserole? I know I do. It is that time of year. It's casserole season, and there's nothing better than a good old comfort meal. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie, and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing six of my family's favorite casseroles. I really hope you find a new recipe for you and your family to enjoy. Now let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna love this million dollar chicken pierogi casserole. In a greased nine by 13 inch baking dish, I'm pouring in half of a 15 ounce jar of Alfredo sauce. Feel free to make your own homemade, but I'm just taking the easy way out. And just spread it out to cover the bottom of that dish. The recipe calls for a 32 ounce bag of the frozen cheese pierogies, but I wanted to try it with only half, so I ended up only using 16 ounces. And you'll just lay those down into an even layer. I set that aside so I could make up a chicken mixture. In a large mixing bowl, I added four ounces of softened cream cheese, along with one cup of cottage cheese, half a cup of sour cream, and I'm also gonna add in the other half of the Alfredo sauce. And I put a tiny bit of water in there and shook it up just to get all that sauce out. Now add you in a big handful of the French fried onions, maybe half a cup or so. And this wasn't in the recipe, but I added half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Then just stir that to make sure everything is well combined. Now you're gonna add about three to four cups of shredded chicken, or you can use diced, as long as it's cooked. Mix that all together then I'm gonna grab that bacon dish with the pierogies and I'm gonna spoon that chicken mixture evenly over the top. And try to do it gently, that way you don't move those pierogies all over the place. Now I'm covering that chicken mixture with about a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. But you could really use any cheese you like here. And I'm also sprinkling over about a cup of French fried onions. Cover this with foil, then this goes into the oven to bake at 375 for about 40 minutes. And I did take that foil off about halfway through just so that top could get golden brown. This was delicious. I need to cook with pierogies more often. You gotta put this John Wayne casserole on your meal plan. I started out in a large skillet I added one pound of lean ground beef and one small diced onion. You're just gonna break that up and let it cook until that ground beef is cooked through. And I'm just using a paper towel to get rid of that grease. Now you're gonna add in one packet of taco seasoning and a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. And in case you didn't know, both of those, the taco seasoning and the Rotel, you can get them in mild or hot, but I always grab the mild. I also added one can of drained corn and about a fourth of a cup of water. Now stir that and let it come to a low simmer. I left that on the stove top to thicken up a little bit and then I moved over to the counter to start on the biscuit layer. In a large bowl, I added three cups of the Bisquick baking mix. And you're also gonna add one cup of water. Now you'll just mix that up until it comes together and it'll form a dough. This is gonna be the bottom layer of our casserole. I set that aside so I can make up a quick third and final mixture. The recipe calls for the Philadelphia chive and onion cream cheese. I didn't have that, so I'm making up a quick substitute. I mixed together eight ounces of softened cream cheese and a couple tablespoons of ranch seasoning. I'm also adding half a cup of mayonnaise. Now mix that together. And as you can see here, I'm struggling. My cream cheese was not at room temperature and I probably should have put it in the microwave, but I didn't. So I had to pull out the old hand mixer. 
So now we have all three mixtures ready so we can put together this casserole. I'm using a 9x13 and make sure you spray that with nonstick spray. Then pour in that biscuit dough. And I had to use my offset spatula to spread that out because it was sliding all over the bottom of that dish. Now for the second layer, you can go ahead and add that ground beef. Just spread it out and make sure it covers all of that biscuit dough. And for this last layer, I'm spooning over that cream cheese. I had to work at it for a bit, but if you don't have an offset spatula, you can just use a fork. It really don't matter how you do it as long as you get it done. Now my favorite part, I'm topping it with two cups of shredded cheese. I used a mixture of cheddar and mozzarella, but you can really use any cheese you like here. This casserole bakes at 325 for about 40 minutes. And if you can be patient, it's better to let it sit for about 10 minutes before you serve it. It's much easier to slice and serve that way. We topped ours with sour cream and taco sauce. And let me tell you, my husband feels like he should put taco sauce on everything. I give him something and he's like, we got taco sauce, <laughs> but it did go well with it. Either way, it's absolutely delicious. This Mexican chicken casserole is easy to make and it's perfect for those busy weeknights. You'll need four cups of cooked shredded chicken. I'm using a rotisserie chicken and I got just enough. And y'all, sometimes I get these chickens and they're like the size of a baby bird. <laughs> but this one was a good one. To that chicken, I added one and one fourth cup of sour cream, a can of drained pinto beans, a can of drained corn, one can of cream of chicken soup, a can of drained rotel, one packet of taco seasoning, and about a cup of shredded cheese. And I probably should have used a bigger bowl for this, but I made it work. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Now just make sure you get all that good and mixed together. I'm using a 9 by 13 baking dish, and I did spray it with nonstick spray. Then you're going to add that chicken mixture right on in. Just try to spread it out into an even layer. And I'm going to top it off with about a cup or so of tortilla strips. And I get these at Walmart, but if you don't have any, you can always just crush up some tortilla chips. Now I'm covering it with about a cup or so of shredded cheese. Then this bakes at 350 for about 30 minutes. I do love the colors of those tricolored tortilla strips. It does make it look a little more festive. I also like that crunch too. We topped ours with sour cream, cheese, and here we go again with the taco sauce. If you're in the mood for comfort food, you have got to make this chicken and dumpling casserole. I added four tablespoons of butter to a nine by 13 dish. Then I put it in the oven while it was preheating so it could start to melt. Now we're gonna start on the dumpling part and I'm using the Formula L biscuit mix. It has little flecks of butter and shortening in there, which makes it even better. But if you don't have this, you can just use self-rising flour. You're gonna add one cup of that mix and one cup of milk. Now mix that up, then set it aside. We're not ready for it just yet. I grabbed the casserole dish out of the oven and that butter was melted. Now you're gonna sprinkle over about three cups of cooked shredded chicken. Hey, y'all have to let me know what your favorite casserole is. I need some new recipes to try. I'm sprinkling over a little nature seasoning here, but you can season it up however you like. Now you're gonna grab that biscuit mixture and drizzle it evenly over the top. And in case you're new here, I always have the recipes linked or typed out in the description box below. Now push that to the side so I can make up one last thing to pour over the top. I'm just using that same measuring cup. I didn't feel like dirtying anything else up. Add in two cups of chicken broth and one can of cream of chicken soup. Then you're gonna give that a really good mix. I post easy recipes like this all the time. I would really love to have you here 
So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now you're going to take that cream of chicken and chicken broth and drizzle it over the top. And you may be tempted, but do not stir this. You got to just trust the process. Just be careful not to spill it when you put it in the oven. You could even set it on a baking sheet before you put it in there. This bakes at 400 degrees for 35 to 45 minutes or whenever that top starts to get golden brown. It may look really liquidy at first, but after it sits for a little bit, it really thickens up. This was amazing. We all loved it. And I just made some buttered corn to go on the side. This meatball sub bubble up casserole only has five ingredients and it's super easy to make. I'm pouring 14 ounces of the frozen Italian style meatballs into a medium sized saucepan, along with a cup and a half of marinara sauce. And for the seasonings, I added half a teaspoon of garlic powder and half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. But feel free to season it up any way you like. Just stir it and let it simmer until those meatballs are heated through. I'm using a 9 by 13 and make sure you spray it with a non-stick spray. You're going to need an 8 count can of refrigerated biscuits. That was a 14 ounce can and I'm just using my kitchen shears to cut each biscuit into 8 small pieces. Now spread them out to cover the bottom of that dish. Now you're going to pour in those meatballs and marinara sauce. Stir it around and make sure everything is mixed together. Make sure all those biscuit pieces are broke up. That way they're spread out evenly. Now you're going to top it with one cup of shredded cheese. And I'm using a trick a few of y'all taught me about. This needs to be covered with foil and I don't want my cheese to stick to that foil. So I sprayed the underneath side with a little nonstick spray. Works like a charm. This bakes at 375 for 30 minutes. After that, I removed it from the oven. I uncovered it and I couldn't help myself. I had to top it with another cup of shredded cheese. Then you're gonna put it back in the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes until that cheese is melted and that top is golden brown. This is delicious. It don't look the prettiest, but it sure tastes good. I topped it with a little more marinara sauce and shredded cheese. There's nothing cozier than a cheesy chicken broccoli rice casserole. I grabbed a rotisserie chicken for this, but any kind of cooked shredded or diced chicken will work fine. You just need four cups, and I set that aside. In a large bowl, I added one can of cream of chicken soup one can of cheddar cheese soup. And if you're not able to find that, you can just use another can of cream of chicken. Now add in half a cup of sour cream. And for the seasonings, I added one teaspoon of minced garlic, about a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, one fourth teaspoon of onion powder, and a little dash of paprika. Now just stir that up a little bit before we add in the rest. Now I'm adding in two cups of instant rice. Just make sure it's the instant kind. You're also gonna add in two cups of milk. Now add in that four cups of shredded chicken. And I also added about a cup of shredded cheese. And I almost forgot about the broccoli. You're gonna add in a 12 ounce bag of frozen broccoli florets. And I did chop mine up into smaller pieces. Then just stir that until everything is well combined. Now I'm adding that to a nine by 13 inch baking dish that I did spray with nonstick spray. Just spread that out. And I like to season this with nature seasoning and I forgot to add it earlier so I'm just sprinkling over a little bit of that now. Now I'm topping everything off 
with about a cup and a half of shredded cheese. And you don't have to add the cheese on top, it'll still be delicious, but we love cheese here. This bakes at 400 for about 40 to 45 minutes. This one we make quite often, so I guess that tells you we think it's amazing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes, and I will see you in the next one. And there's nothing better. You want to help me do my intro? Hey y'all, I'm Valerie, and oh, I almost had it. Who doesn't love a cozy casserole? I know I do. Stop, <laughs> like me, baby. Maybe you forget about it. I forgot about, I already forgot. What were we talking about? I'm gonna have to hold you backwards. That's mommy's. Oh, no, 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 no. That's mommy, mommy's microphone. You just slobbered on me. No, 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 here's your toy. You got a remote control. Look at this nice pink remote control. Don't you love this remote control? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't have that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I gotta do the video. You gonna say hey? Say, I will like casseroles one day, but not right now. Say, not right now. Not yet. But one day I'm gonna love them. I'm gonna love casseroles. <laughs>